Child stardom isn't easy, even today. While being a child star in the 1970s wasn't nearly as troublesome as earlier decades, it was still tough on 70s TV and film kids. Some celebrity tweens and teens went on to become famous. Others were so traumatized by their appearances they swore never to work in the industry again. Are you looking to know where your favorite stars from top shows like Three for the Road, Happy Days, and The Partridge Family are today? Then keep watching. Jodie Foster while Jodie Foster started acting in the 60s, her portrayal of an underage prostitute in Taxi Driver propelled her into the spotlight. She was only 12 when she was cast, which created some controversy. But later, her performance in the role landed her an Academy Award nomination in 1976. The same year, she appeared in the now cult classic film Freaky Friday and another popular 70s movie, Candleshoe. Her dedication in these early years paid off, and now Jodie Foster is a Hollywood legend. She was even awarded the coveted Cecil B. DeMille Award at the 2013 Golden Globes. Donny Osmond Donny Osmond rose to fame as a teen idol in the 70s. In 1971, at 14 years old, he released two solo albums, the Donny Osmond album and To You With Love, Donny. They later went gold, reaching 12 and 13 on the Billboard 200. Just one year later, he released two more chart-topping albums. His runaway success as a teen set him up for a career on stage, starring in everything from reality TV hits like The Masked Singer in 2019 to playing the lead role of Joseph in the Broadway musical Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat throughout the 90s. He also voiced the singing of Lee Shang in Disney's Mulan. Are you excited for more look backs at your favorite eras of TV? Factsverse has videos about stars from the 1940s to today, so make sure you subscribe to our channel and ring that notification bell. Marie Osmond Marie Osmond is the sister of singer Donnie. However, unlike her brother, she was more of a country idol than a pop singer, though equally as famous. She released her first chart-topping single, Paper Roses, in 1973, and followed that success with a solo album by the same name. The impressive thing about this was that Osmond was just 13 at the time. Later in life, she teamed up with her brother for a successful Las Vegas show that ran for nearly a decade. Even at 60, Osmond wasn't done with the entertainment biz. In late 2019, she landed a spot as co-host of The Talk. Mike Lookinland Mike Lookinland was just nine when he appeared on the premiere episode of the hit sitcom The Brady Bunch. He played Bobby Brady, the second youngest child. He stayed on the show throughout its five seasons, basically growing up on set. After a few TV specials and a part in the 1974 film The Towering Inferno, Lookinland decided he was done with the entertainment industry. He moved to Utah, where he started a successful decorative concrete business, which he still runs today. In 2019, he appeared in the reality show A Very Brady Renovation, where, befitting his concrete career, he helped renovate the original Brady home. Lookin' Land is married with two children. Brooke Shields when the film Pretty Baby came out in 1978, starring a 12-year-old Brooke Shields, it stirred up a lot of controversy due to its depiction of child prostitution and scenes involving nudity. Brooke Shields, however, was no stranger to the limelight. She'd started working as a model when she was just 11 months old. A year later, she was cast in a western called Wanda Nevada, and she's remained an A-list celebrity since then. She's performed in films and sitcoms, written a book about her experiences with postpartum depression, and was even married to tennis star Andre Agassi for a few years in the 90s. Today, Shields and her husband, screenwriter Chris Henchy, have two daughters together. Susan Olson Susan Olson was just eight years old when she first appeared on The Brady Bunch as the youngest sibling, Cindy. She stayed on the show until its end in 1974 and appeared in all the follow-ups and specials except one, 1988's A Very Brady Christmas. And that's only because she was on her honeymoon when it was filmed. She didn't act much after relinquishing her Brady role, and in the 1990s went into graphic design. Now, in her late 50s, she's a passionate animal rights activist. Olson co-hosted a popular radio show called Two Chicks Talking Politics, but was later fired because she made homophobic remarks about actor Leon Accord Whiting. Leaf Garrett in the 1970s, Leif Garrett had three hit albums, despite having no musical training whatsoever. He also starred in a bunch of popular TV shows and movies, including a breakthrough role in Three for the Road when he was 14. By the time the fast-paced early 80s rolled around, Garrett had four more albums to his name and starring roles in classic films like The Outsiders and Thunder Alley. Later in life, Garrett opened up about his ongoing struggles with drug addiction, including writing about his numerous possessions arrests in his 2019 memoir titled Idle Truth. Peter Ostrom 
Peter Ostrom burped his way down from the ceiling of Willy Wonka's chocolate factory as Charlie Bucket when he was 12. The 1971 film Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory was his first acting experience, and it was soon to be his last. Not because the studios didn't want him, but because he didn't want to be an actor. He even turned away a lucrative three-movie deal to head back to his everyday kid life. He grew up to be a veterinarian, keeping his role as Charlie secret from as many people as possible. Nowadays, however, he's less shy about his golden ticket win and speaks at schools about his time on set and his work as a vet. Quinn Cummings Quinn Cummings rose to fame in 1977's The Goodbye Girl, bagging an Academy Award nomination at just 10 years old. In fact, she remains today one of the youngest Oscar nominees ever. In the late 70s, Cummings landed a role in Family, playing an orphaned girl adopted by the Lawrence family. She gave up acting in 1991, settling down to write books about everything from homeschooling and pets to her life story. Cummings was an avid supporter of the Me Too movement and spoke openly about her sexual assault experiences in Hollywood. Valerie Bertinelli you might remember teenage Valerie Bertinelli from her role on One Day at a Time, a sitcom that premiered in 1975. She appeared in all but one of the 209 episodes of the show, while also taking roles on other popular shows of the decade like The Hardy Boys and Battle of the Network Stars. In the early 2000s, Bertinelli became a passionate advocate for Jenny Craig, losing a whopping 40 pounds on the diet program. In the 2010s, she married now-husband Tom Vitale and took home two Daytime Emmy Awards as host of the popular cooking shows Kids Baking Championship and Valerie's Home Cooking. Eve Plum Eve Plum was yet another Brady sibling. She played Jan, best known for her iconic catchphrase, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. In 1969, when she was 11, she bought a mansion for herself in Malibu, which she sold in 2016. Plum was a passionate, versatile actor, and in between filming The Brady Bunch, she took on roles in other 70s hits like Dawn, Portrait of a Teenage Runaway, and its sequel, Alexander, The Other Side of Dawn. Now in her 60s, she's still a star of the silver screen, appearing in HBO's Crashing, CBS's Bull, and Law & Order SVU. Danny Bonaducci Danny Bonaducci started acting at age 11. His first role was as Danny Partridge on the all-so-wholesome TV series The Partridge Family. It's no surprise he starred in show business young. He came from a seasoned family of screen darlings. His father, Joseph, was a writer for One Day at a Time and The Dick Van Dyke Show. After his Partridge family success, he starred in a few movies, including Corvette Summer with Mark Hamill, and even released a hit album in 1973. In later years, Bonaducci opened up about his troubled childhood, lack of support, and homelessness after the Partridge family was canceled, and his addiction to performance-enhancing drugs, so much so that it destroyed his first and second marriages. In 2010, the 63-year-old cleaned-up actor married his third wife, manager Amy Railsback. Now it's time to hear from you. Is there a 70s child actor you thought would go on to do big things but didn't? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Faxverse if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.